From Nashville, Tennessee, Inside the Noise Podcast with your host, Jenna Heidman. Here's Jenna. <laughs> okay, welcome back to another episode of Inside the Noise. Today I am sitting here in the studio with Ava Sapelsa. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. Um, we are start off each week with like a good week, bad week. Make some noise, stop that noise. So like just a week high, week low. Of this week. Of this week, of last week. All um, right. Well, of this week, um, I got a cat. So I, I saw that on really Instagram. <laughs> I'm really excited about that cat. That's, uh, yeah, that's really great. A low? You know, honestly, I don't know if I'd really even have a low this week. I had to uh, I had to cancel a couple rights, but I got some good songs this week, so that's kind of yeah. cool every week. I don't know if I really have a, have a low. Have a low, yeah. Okay. I do have a low. My low, I locked my keys in my car for my first time ever on Monday night, and there was a cop across the street, and I was trying to wave him down, but he drove away, so then I had to pay, it was like, it was was like 65, I was like, I don't even know what to do right now, I've never locked my keys in my car. That's really fun, I've never done that either. And like, yeah, I'm like, I've made it to 25 without doing that, and now I'm like, I was like sitting there, I could see them on the driver's seat, I'm like, I should have learned how to like break into cars when I was younger, I guess. But I had to call, like, the, the locksmith. Yeah, like, a hanger, <laughs> something. But that's my bad week. Good week. I've had a really good week. I'm going to a lot of shows this week. A lot of people who have been on the podcast and a lot of, awesome. like, artists are releasing new songs. And I'm just excited to go and, like, see them and support them. Very cool. That's yeah, great. that's my good week. Make some noise. Stop that noise. <laughs> Love that. All right. Let's just dive right into your story and kind of, like, give me your background and For what sure. brought you to Nashville. Yeah, um, so I, I'm from Chicago originally, and I grew up around music. My parents aren't musicians, but they played music all the time. Started singing really young. Um, started writing songs when Taylor Swift got, you know, yes. like, I think I was 11 or 12 when her first stuff came out, and I'd been playing piano and singing and heard her music, quit piano, taught myself guitar, just like wanted to be her, um, <laughs> and got really into that. I went to uh, I went to a boarding school called Interlochen Arts Academy in high school. Okay, in, in Michigan. Chicago? Oh, Michigan. Um, and so left home at 16 to study. It's like an intensive music school, basically. I studied songwriting there as well as academics um, for my last two years of high school and played a lot of shows, writing a lot of music, kind of just like learning who I was as a writer. And then I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston For two years, I was a um, songwriting and music business double major. Dang, girl. Um, But I didn't graduate, so (laughs) that doesn't really mean that much. But while I was there, I was was playing every weekend in the Boston bar scene. I was recording music. I was writing, just kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. doing as much as I could while I was there, knowing I would move to Nashville. And um, I ended up winning a songwriting contest to play at one of BMI's songwriting festivals, which for me at the time, I had never been around professional songwriters outside of college. So I went down to Florida to play in this festival when I was uh, I was 18 or 19 at the time and was around like, you know, these hit uh, songwriters yeah. and a couple, a couple of them, you know, kind of I was talking to them about what their paths were. You know, these are people like, you know, Danny Myrick, who's had, you know, a bunch of number ones, great writers that are just are super nice. And um, they gave me advice and they were like, you know, you just got to get to Nashville. You just have to move, drop out of college. My mom was there and she was like, really? Okay. Like, <laughs> you should drop out. That's like, awesome. Oh. And so after that, it was like a week of, you know, being around people doing what I wanted to do. And yeah. all of them were like, yeah, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a deal. I didn't, you know. I just came here. There was nothing there for me except music. You just move and make it work when you get there. So. That was the beginning of my sophomore year. I came back from that in October and decided in November that that would be my last year. Um, never re-enrolled in classes. Just <laughs> dropped out. Just done. Um, and like two weeks after my sophomore year ended, I moved down to Nashville. Um, I knew like five people. And well, uh, Yeah, like what was the hardest or biggest struggle of moving here? And um, I honestly, I think the thing I was most scared about was making friends. I knew yeah. the music thing, I would work it out. I regardless of where I was living at the time, you know, whether it was Boston or Chicago, wherever, I was playing gigs, I was meeting people to work with, that was never an issue, but moving to a new city when you don't have a structure like college, and I knew I couldn't go to bars, I was 19 when I moved here, I couldn't go out, everyone my age was at Belmont probably, Mm -hmm. didn't know any of them, (laughs) and uh, so I was really worried about making friends and having people to hang out with, which... Didn't end up being a problem. I guess I'm not the worst person, so <laughs> it ended 
ended up being okay, but that was scary at first. And yeah. After a couple of weeks, it was not. It was just fun. Yeah. And how'd you find like your community, like your song, like how'd you meet and network with songwriters? I, uh, before I moved down, I knew I had visited in March and I kind of learned about the whole writer's round circuit. And at that point I decided I just wanted to write at least for the time being. I didn't want to be a touring artist or do any of that. So I knew the way to break into that was to play writer's rounds and meet people. Mm -hmm. So I looked up before I moved a list of the best writer's rounds in Nashville, emailed all of them, asked if I could host a round. I knew two other writers, so it was enough to host a (laughs) round. (laughs) And they better be free that night. Yeah, exactly. So I did that, and a lot of them booked me. One of them, it was Belcourt Taps, the first place I played. Oh, that's awesome. And they emailed me back, and they're like, cool, yeah, you can host a round. What dates can you do between it? I was like, June 1st and on. It was moving June 1st. Like, yeah. June 1st forward, I'm free. And they're like, great, June 1st. So I moved to the- <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. in at, like, 3 p.m., and then I played my, my first writer's round, met a whole bunch of people. I think my first couple months I played eight or nine rounds and just met writers, connected with them, and that kind of started to just, you know, yeah, just ripple just effect. There. Yeah, just meet their friends, and they started to, people are so nice here. It just They are, they really are yeah, so nice. Yeah, so inviting. Everyone was so welcoming to me, so it was great. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> do you want to play a song? Sure, yeah, I'll Because I'm, I'm, so, like, this is a different style for me, because I'm not familiar with, like, your songs. Sure. So yeah. I'm excited to hear them, and like experience them usually I have like games planned and stuff but I'm like I'm just coming in and gonna well, enjoy it. Swing it yeah I'm just gonna enjoy it awesome cool well uh this is actually a newer song um it hasn't been recorded by anybody yet I mean it's that's the goal but mm-hmm. I wrote it with a friend of mine Sam Varga and a great artist writer in town named Christina Taylor I actually just had another song come out with her her current single it's called Loser it's out everywhere it did the whole Radio Disney thing oh, and yeah. uh still playing on Radio Disney Country and uh, but we wrote this one together, and um, I just turned 21, so Kay. I am a new legal drinker, so <laughs> yes. this song for me, like, I don't really, I was always in co-writes, and people would be talking about different types of alcohol, and I, one time someone said something about a Moscow Mule, and I was like, well, I don't know what that is, and they were like, are you kidding me, I don't know what that is, but it just never went out, so I didn't know, but um, <laughs> this song is about drinking away your feelings. All right. It's called Worth a Shot. And broke my heart On some brown I should've known from the start Was only good at leaving Shouldn't have believed him When he said that he would stay But this ain't nothing new So all that's left to do Is drink my pain away Cause Jackie never left me On the rocks And Tito's knows how to pick me back up You can hate a hangover All you want but at least it's still there when I wake up. They say you don't go looking at the bottom of a bottle. Drowning your problems ain't no way to solve them. Well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But it's worth a shot. my broken heart remedy but whiskey's more fun and cheaper than therapy but when it comes to love i think i've had enough so someone cut me off i'm done and my mama and my friends say i need a good man so i'm gonna order me one cause jack ain't never left me on the rocks and tito's knows how to pick me back up you can hate a hangover all you Then they don't, yeah, all men are the same. But there's 
Cause if you that ain't Jack ain't never left me on the rocks And Tito's knows how to pick me back up You can hate a hangover all you want But at least it's still there when I wake up They say don't go looking at the bottom of a bottle Drowning your problems ain't no way to solve them Well maybe it is, maybe it's not well, Maybe it is, maybe it's not But it's worth a shot So now that you're 21, have you been drinking all those <laughs> alcohol? You know, I've dabbled in it. Yeah. Try to, try to keep it, you know, responsible. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not really like a huge partier. I work okay. a lot and I, you know, I'm, I'm writing every morning too. Yeah. Like, so I don't know how people do that and go out every night, you know, whiskey jam, wake up for at 10 a.m. right. I can't function. No. So I <laughs> rarely do that, but. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I don't know how people function with that either. I think I used to when I was younger. And See, that's what everyone said to me. They're like, oh, you're young. You're fine. And then like, you're I'm like, hungover I'm... for like eight hours. <laughs> I'm like, this, I may be young, this but is my body is not. Um, what are some of your favorite spots to go in Nashville that, like, that you've just recently discovered? To go out? Yeah. Um, so I did the whole Midtown thing. Yeah. Not going to lie. I had fake IDs. So okay. I definitely did that at I, one point. I did too when um, I was younger. <laughs> but... I my favorite spot to go now. I love to go to East Nashville. Okay, Rosemary yeah. is one of my favorite bars. I mean, Red Door is fun in Midtown just because you see everybody you know. Right, that's great. I did the Broadway thing once. One, that's again. it. Oh my gosh! I literally we went out. It was like girls' night. Planned it out. Had all my like female songwriters and writers with all girls. Probably had twenty like blonde girls. I swear we were all blonde. Oh and my gosh! Went to like Broadway. Matching we outfits. We lasted like an hour, and, and that's like, it. We just get a hot dog and leave. So that was that. <laughs> But East, I like East Nashville because it's it's a lot more laid back. Yeah, you, know, you can actually hear what you know, talk to people and things like that. Yeah, that's my biggest pet peeve is like you go somewhere and I'm like I can't even talk to yeah. people I'm out with. Exactly. It's so loud. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I did Broadway. I would, when I first moved here, I would never go out on Broadway because like I met some guys and like it's not cool to do that. And I'm like, okay, right. it's not cool. Like <laughs> whatever. I'll I'll go where you guys go. But then like I started having a lot of friends that played down there. Oh, it's fun if you're going to see music. Yeah, but then it's, like, the same thing, and I got in a rut at the beginning of this year where I'm like, I hadn't been to Broadway in three years, and now I'm here every, like, other night. That's hilarious. Like, this is the problem. There are some that are, like, I go to Old Red now and then because okay. one of my main co-writers, and for, I have a lot of songs, and he plays my songs out, which is why I go, I also like to watch him play, but <laughs> yeah. he plays my song. His name is Jesse LaBelle, and he plays at Old Red all the time, and he does originals. They let you play originals there. Yeah, they have a cool setup. Um, so I like to go to that, but it's always, it's not like going out on Broadway. It's you like know? you go, like, you go to see, listen, you get, to like, listen. a drink, and then, And then you're you like, know. peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can handle, like, that. That's about it now. Yeah. I, yeah. My going out days have really dwindled <laughs> down lately. <laughs> um, um, and you said you're from Illinois. I'm from Illinois. Really? Where yeah. Are you from? Um, do you know Champaign? Yeah. And Kankakee? Uh-huh. Small town in between the two. Okay. So That's awesome. So, a little in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Not. Yeah, you know, I really didn't go to that part of Illinois. <laughs> people, so many people are from Illinois here, and, like, they're like, oh, so you know Illinois. I'm from, you know, You're f- whatever area that's, like, almost in Indiana. I'm like, I Dang. literally didn't leave Chicago. Like, yeah. I was there all the time, so. Everyone who talks to me is always like, You're from Chicago then, right? I'm like, No. I town had 500 people in it. Like, <laughs> that's, that's. It is really rural. When yeah. You're not from Chicago. I'm like, that's not quite Chicago. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, let's do off the record confessions. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a few. Okay, good. Something embarrassing, weird. It's like they're off the record. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> these are too many people know about these and be off the record to get made fun of them. Made fun of for these things a lot, but probably the most embarrassing one. Actually, I think I have two. They're equally as embarrassing. But for a good portion of my life, I was like crazy obsessed like i think nowadays they call it like a a stan i don't know what that is like young kids like a super fan or i don't know what it is okay like i was like an obsessive fan of the jonas brothers from (gasps) (laughs) i was like right in that time i'm 21 so that was you know when i was uh i'm 25 so i think i might have missed that because i I wasn't probably by a couple years but when i was in 
third grade to sixth grade. Like, I'm not kidding you. I listen to their album every night before bed. Like, every <laughs> morning driving to school. My mom probably was like, what is wrong with my child? I had posters covering every single part of my walls, including my ceiling, so that I could look at them when I went to bed. That's oh, how my gosh. Was. And um, I watched Camp Rock, like. Did, did you go to the tour? Oh, did I go to the tour? <laughs> I went to, like, eight tours. I had strep throat when I was, um. I was going to one of their concerts and I got strep throat the day of and my mom was like you can't go you have I had a I could barely swallow I had like a 102 degree fever and I was like I have to go so she was like okay so I took like oh my gosh a steroid basically and went to the Jonas Brothers I couldn't even stand up I was like sitting on a stool watching them because (laughs) I was so sick um so that was pretty you know I ended up getting it's too it's sad people were cool with it when I was really little yeah and then once I got to sixth grade I got um, made fun of for it by a friend and in front of a bunch of my friends. I was with the boys, and I got made fun of for being a huge Jonas Brothers fan. And I ran home. I was across the street. I ran home and ripped all the posters off my wall. Oh, my god! And said I never listened to them again. But I did actually meet them when I was in fifth grade also, which was, like, amazing. Which was, like, the highlight. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's pretty embarrassing. There's still <laughs> evidence of me, you know, that picture and all that. But um, the other one... <laughs> would be my mom loves to tell this story. So nowadays I I'm really I don't like to sit still. I schedule I'm like the queen of over scheduling. Anyone that knows oh, me yeah. knows I have a calendar booked. Right now I have stuff every single day through November or through December sixteenth. So like I am like I don't really like to have any downtime. That's just who I am as a person. But as a kid I was pretty lazy. Like to watch a lot of T V <laughs> and um when I was really little like, you know, fourth grade, I would sit watching TV for so long that I'd stand up and I would pass out because I had been sitting for so long. <laughs> like, the blood would, like, drain and I would, like, get dizzy and fall over. And oh, I, my gosh. I thought I had, like, a health condition and I went to the doctor. And they were just like... And he was like, you need to move more. Like, you're sitting too much. <laughs> so my mom tells every every boyfriend, everybody, she's like, did you know Ava used to be so lazy that she'd pass out when and, she stood up? And now you're like... Now, now I, you, I grew out of it. Yeah, Maybe too much. <laughs> you don't allow yourself to have a free moment now exactly. because of that. Oh, those were great. I don't know what I have this. I confess every week. Yeah, there's a lot so of confessions. I, tried, I, thought, I think I might have thought of one. I think I was going to say I locked my keys in my car, but that was my bad week too. <laughs> so like that, uh, I don't know. We'll come back to it if I think of one. Okay. I'm out. I haven't, I haven't been going out lately, so I don't have any like good like embarrassing – did you have like a childhood obsession? Any bands or anything? I didn't. Not bands. All my friends really liked like Backstreet Boys okay. and Nick Carter, and I was like thought I was too cool for that. Ah. Or like I listened to a lot of country music, so I didn't know. Right, right. Um, I really liked One Hundred and One Dalmatians. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's like a normal kid thing. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's normal. I guess that is normal. I'm trying to think. I don't think I had anything too weird. I still sleep with a stuffed animal. That's I love that. That's like, that's cute. Is it? I ha- I would except that I lost mine like well, two years ago. I had one, <laughs> and I I think I left it in a hotel or something. And see, um, I tried not to travel with it. Yeah, no, it's sad. I feel so. It was my lifelong stuffed animal, and I lost it. I probably would still sleep with it if I. Yeah, you if still I had it. Lose it. Yeah. I got mine at thirteen, so it wasn't even like a oh. child. <laughs> What kind of animal is it? It's a dog. It's a scruffy puppy. Oh, that's cute. But Do you have a dog in real life? So I, I got a dog when I was – I went to Belmont, and I got a dog when I was 20. I was like, I need a dog. Like, yeah. I'm in Nashville. I need a dog. I, so I got a chocolate lab. Cutest puppy ever. I had her here for two and a half years. We lived in the Gulch in an apartment that was 400 square feet. So oh, my gosh. Me, a chocolate lab in a tiny apartment wasn't working out. Yeah. And then I also travel a lot for work. Right. So I was on the road for a month at a time, and she would go live with my dad, and he lives on the river, and he has land. So Whiskey now lives at home with father. Oh, and of well, course, you get to see him. Oh, yeah. She's so cute. Her. And her name's Whiskey because I was 20 and named my dog Weird. Whiskey. That's hilarious. <laughs> named my dog after alcohol. <laughs> my dad, like, didn't like calling her Whiskey at first, so he called her Whiskers. Aww. But now he's okay with her being named Whiskey. He was like, probably like, okay, Jenna. That's so funny. Just stop. But yeah. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, confessions are always good to get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you write a lot now. Mm-hmm. Um, as a writer, do you go in and 
is it hard? Like I, I'm always, I'm not a writer, so I don't know exactly. Like you go in to write a song with, say, people, and you're writing a song. Are you have a specific artist in mind? Are you going to write to tell your story and hope someone else relates to it? Yeah, I rarely am I telling my story. Only if it's like if I'm really have something that I feel like I need to get out. Like you know, I go through something emotional or whatever. I'll write that by myself. I write a lot alone. Okay, uh, but usually those don't really see the light of day or they're not really pitchable or anything like that but it's more like for my own sanity and therapy but um if I'm going into a write hopefully there's an artist in the write and you Mm -hmm. just assume you're writing for them that's kind of the goal is to have an artist there and you just figure out what they need what kind of song they want what they're going through you know or I'll like research them ahead of time like okay I know this person has a long-term girlfriend so probably go for a love song um but if there isn't an artist in the room, if it's just, you know, me and a writer or two other writers or a producer, um, if I know that one of us has either a publisher that could pitch it or, like, I have a couple personal relationships with artists that if my song is perfect, I can just text it to them. But, yeah. So, right, if, if we know that we have those and the song is perfect, we'll be like, cool, like, let's write for so-and-so or let's try and write. We know that Jake Owen is looking for songs. Let's try and write something in that vein, you know, because somebody has a connection there. Yeah. But um, otherwise, you know, it's kind of just like, I like to, tr- I think that the whole Nashville writing thing is so focused on like the end goal, but I fell in love with the Nashville writers that are writing honest stuff, like Lauren McKenna. You know, mm-hmm. she writes songs, people get old, it's like, you know, who's going to, I don't know who's going to cut that, who would cut that besides her? It sounds like it's just for her, but, and she's not, re- she's an artist now, but she wasn't, and it's right. like, She's writing honest stuff that just feels right in the moment, and that's the kind of stuff I want to write that isn't necessarily geared towards, well, is this radio, or mm-hmm. would someone cut this? Because a good song is a good song no matter what. You know, you hear stories about Blue Went Your Color. They wrote that song, and, like, it, no one was cutting it, whatever. It was around town for a while, and fi- it was it was so good and just yeah. like, such an incredible song that word eventually got around, and then either you know it's yeah like, things like that happen with good songs if you're not pushing it trying to get a hit or a radio hit or, yeah you know what's the craziest story you have with one of your songs or like one of your favorite moments or memories favorite with the song moments, coming to life probably um i have two songs that i play a lot of writers rounds just for fun just because i yeah. love to sing um and i love to share new music and all that and I the best moment as a writer would be my first cut. So I wrote a song with Jesse LaBelle mm-hmm. and Austin Burke, who's an artist in town. Um, and it was my first time writing with Austin. I was nervous because I knew his music. I'd heard his stuff on Hot Country and yeah. he was on Spotify. I knew his songs, and I got pulled in as the third on the right. And so I was like, okay, I got to be good. You're going to mess this <laughs> up. And um, that first right, we wrote a song that was just, like, magical. We left the right, we, like, hugged at the end, and we were like, guys, this is, you know, something was special about it. And, um, like, two days later, he was like, yeah, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to go in for my next project. And at this point, he had a lot of label interests, a lot going on, and I had zero things going on. You know, I had yeah. no songs recorded. You know, I was just playing the writers around circuit and, you know, didn't, uh, no publishers ever would even know who I was at all. You know, it was, like, yeah. very much, I was six months in Nashville. And so... When he cut that song, it was like, okay, like I know it's gonna be a long, a long journey before this comes out because that was almost a full year ago now, and it'll come out almost. It's coming out in January, so that'll be almost a full year oh, after that's... we wrote the song. But he recorded it maybe five months ago, four months ago, and I got to go into the studio with him and watch the really just amazing musicians do it and him singing and getting the first mix of it back i almost started uh, crying oh that's so cool like, i'm singing harmonies on it so my vocals are in there and it was just like one of those kind of like zero to 60 moments where it was like you know all of a sudden i had i had nothing and then all of a sudden i have this song that's going to be a single with he just signed a record deal and um one of those things where like this could potentially be this could yeah really a really big thing and you know you can't get too excited because things change quickly yeah in nashville but um, that was just a really cool, that whole process was like. Yeah, it's cool. You got to be from the writer's room to recording exactly, to having, to being part of it. it. Yeah. Exactly. And now I just, and now just you get to watch the life of he's it. He's on radio tour for another song. Cause this song, it's called Slower. It hasn't come out yet, but he's on radio tour for his song, Whole Lot in Love. And yeah. he just tagged me 
on Facebook on a video. They did a live stream at one of the radio stations, and he did, like, a little mini set, and he's playing the song at a station in, I don't even know what city it's in, but, like, the big country station he's playing the song I wrote, and I was like, that's just, that's you know, so it's cool. something that yeah. I didn't really ever, you know, anticipate happening, at least at this point, so. Yeah, do you want to play that song? Yes, yes. Segue. <laughs> I'm getting better at segues. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's yeah, a goal that's right perfect. now. <laughs> All right, so this is called, uh, this is called Slower. It's never enough time in the day and those hands on the clock don't take a break. Seems like I don't either these days And that freeway speed we have speed chase Makes it hard to hit the brakes Well she knows how to make my heart race Just a little slower Take my time when I get to hold her This heaven feels a little closer With her head right on my shoulder Next to her, the fire burns and the world turns just a little slower. The more I know, the more I like, cause she gets finer like a bottle of wine. Feels so good and gets better with time. Oh, the highest highs, they never end. Don't know how she does it, but it's magic when she makes the sun set. Just a little slower. Take my time when I get to hold her. This heaven feels a little closer with her head right on my shoulder. And next to her, the fire burns and the world turns. Just a little slower. into her eyes and watch it all flash by and wish that we could do it one more time but just a little slower yeah just a little slower take my time when I get to hold her cause heaven feels a little Closer with her head right on my shoulder And next to her the fire burns and the world turns Just a little slower Yeah, just a little slower Yeah, slower Ooh, I'm a sucker for a good love song <laughs> And then also because I know Austin and I know like his love story, oh, kind yeah. of like it just makes you love it even more. It's it's great when you do know the story behind it, which is actually where like we went into that right. And he was basically like, you know, I've been he's been dating his girlfriend for a really long time, and he's like, I just you know I come back from being on the road, and it's like everything's crazy, and then she's there, and everything kind of just slows down. It's like, well, <sighs> well, that's there we go. Beautiful. That's it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so definitely knowing him, and he's a great guy, and. Everything about him is, it's a good person to have a first cup. Yeah, for sure. it's a really catchy song, too. And, Thank like, you. yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be so exciting so to see that grow and come out next year. I'm excited. And um, we'll wrap up on that. Amazing. But where can everyone follow you? And Totally, yeah. You can find me on uh, the gram, Ava, A V A dot Sapelsa. All the cat photos now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my whole story is just my cat, so I'm really, I apologize in advance, but you can find me there. Twitter, I don't really tweet very much. I don't Probably either. Instagram would be the Instagram, best. Instagram, yeah. Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I have a, yeah, I have a You have a personal, page, have a personal page? one. Okay. You can find me. I also, Facebook is kind of like, eh, eh. More the gram. Instagram is definitely the way to go. All right. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for coming thank on. Thank you so much and for having me. Yeah, it was, so it was great. Fun. Awesome.